equations. Again, practice with the kinematic equations. In this situation, we're on an ice rink. So we have a hockey puck. Mass is given. Um, we won't need that mass, but just to show you what you might encounter. Uh, it's moving to the left at a certain speed, 17 meters per second. Then we have a block of wood, for some reason, on the ice rink. Its mass is given. Again, you won't need this number. Um, and it has sandpaper glued to the bottom of the wood. And it's moving towards the hockey puck, starting off with a speed of 22 meters per second. Uh, right now, at the start of the problem, there's 26 meters in between the two objects. And there's uh, really just about zero friction between the uh, uh, hockey puck and the ice. But there is friction with the uh, block of wood and the hockey puck. So make a simple drawing here. The puck moving one way at uh, 17 meters per second. The block of wood with the sandpaper on the bottom starts with a speed of 22 meters per second. But it uh, has acceleration. The acceleration for the hockey puck is zero. The acceleration for the block of wood, minus 1.7 meters per second squared, they're going to hit. We want to calculate the amount of time um, required till they do hit. We're told that there are 26 meters between the two objects um, at the start of the problem. So how would we go about calculating the uh, time required for them to collide. We do not know the final velocity of the wood at the time of collision. So as we use the kinematic equations, we probably want to stay away from an equation that uses the final velocity of the wood. Um, so what can we say? Well, we can say that the 26 meters equals the distance that the wood travels plus the distance that the hockey puck travels. So there's a starting equation, 26 meters equal to those two distances. How will I calculate those distances? Well, 26 meters, and I'm going to put brackets here. This is now the distance that the wood travels. It's going at 22 meters per second, and it's going to travel until they collide. T will be the time until they collide, but it has an acceleration to it a negative acceleration and meters over second squared here. Um, so that's how we calculate the distance that the wood travels. Um, this distance is, um, if I can squeeze it in here, but this distance is original velocity multiplied by time plus one half at squared is the formula that's being used here. Now, what about the hockey puck? Well, it has a little easier calculation. There's no acceleration. The distance it travels is equal to 17 meters per second multiplied by the time until the collision. Now, even though these are uh, opposite directions, I'm not using these in the sense of velocity here. Uh, my drawing is going to handle the fact that this is a plus number, this is a minus number slowing down. Uh, but I really just need the distance that the hockey puck travels. So I'm not going to put a negative number here. It doesn't travel a negative distance. This distance is a portion of the 26 meters. So this is a little unconventional. I hope not too confusing. hope you can get the concept here. Here's the distance the wood travels. That's going to be to the right. Here's the distance that the hockey puck travels. It's to the left, but it comes in in this formula, the way I've set this up, as a positive number. <coughs> so plus 17 meters per second multiplied by time. A little unconventional, but I believe it's correct. I hope it's correct. Well, we need to gather like terms here. We need to multiply the half on here. And I'm going to put this in standard uh, quadratic form. So I'm going to move things to the left side. I prefer a positive coefficient in front of the t squared. That's not required, but that's my preference. So 1.7 divided by 2. That's a negative here, and I come up with negative 0.85. I have to add plus 0.85 t squared to both sides. So that'll create 0.85 t squared, 
What about the T terms? Well, I'm going to have 17T here. I have 22T here. That's plus 39T on this side. I have to subtract 39T from both sides. So minus 39T. <clears throat> and then the number, well, that's a plus 26. It's sitting on the left side. That equals 0. And again, quadratic, minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2a. So the time is going to be minus the minus 39. The b coefficient is minus 39. The a is 0.85. The c is plus 26. So minus b, I substitute minus 39 for the b, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. So working out the b squared minus 4ac, I came up with 1,432.6. And then that's 1,432.6. And then took a square root of that. So I found that t is 39 plus or minus 37.85 divided by 1.7. If you use the plus sign for this, you come up with a t value of 45.2 seconds. It's 39 plus 37.85 divided by 1.7. Oh, that's the mathematical answer. Um, we'll discuss that. If I use the minus sign, I come up with t equals 0.68 seconds. Now, we only have 26 meters to work with. What's true about the motion of the hockey puck if we use 45.2 seconds? That's a lot bigger than 26 meters. That's, though this answer is rejected. The 0.68 will work. 0.68 times the 17, that's some number less than 26. They're going to collide someplace in here. Uh, so this is our answer. T is 0.68 seconds, again, with quadratic Sorry about dropping off here. But the, the quadratic formula, um, there are two mathematical answers. We analyze the physics of the situation and throw out one of those answers. So the t is 0.68 seconds. Um, what about the distance traveled by the hockey puck before the, uh, the collision? Well, again, that's easy. The distance the hockey puck travels, it's traveling at a constant speed, 17 meters per second. Uh, 4.68 seconds before the collision occurs. So that's 11.6 meters. What's the distance traveled by the wood? To slide this up further. The distance traveled by the wood. The distance traveled by the wood, using what I would call the third kinematic equation, is the initial velocity in 0.68 seconds plus one-half the acceleration and this 0.68 seconds squared. <coughs> so working out that with your calculator, you should do this on your own, but I came up with 14.6 meters. And then what's interesting about 14.6 meters added with 11.6 meters well, if I add those two, the distance the wood travels plus the distance the hockey puck travels, I came up with 26.2 meters. We've rounded off here with this 0.68 seconds. It's not an exact number. Um, but we are close to what we should have. 26 meters was the interval between the two objects at the start of the motion. They collided in a certain time. The puck traveled a shorter distance than the wood. The wood was going faster initially. It is slowing down a little bit, but this initial uh, speed causes it to cover more distance than the hockey puck. So there we are with the kinematic equations. We make a little drawing. We list our variables and create our own equation depending on the situation, and then realize how we could calculate the distance that the wood travels, uh, v naught t plus 1 half at squared, the distance the hockey puck travels is just distance equals rate times time because the acceleration is zero. If you 
bring it up to here. If the acceleration is zero, distance equals rate times time. And analyzing the result of the quadratic formula, uh, one, we calculate first with the plus sign. We get a, a number that's too big for the physical situation. The hockey puck would travel too much distance. We get another result using the minus sign, 39 minus 37.85. Then dividing by 1.7, we get a reasonable time. So we accept that answer. A little double check, we calculate the distances that the two objects move, add them together, and we do come up with 26. So keep practicing on your own. Watch some more videos.